Praise the Lord, saints. We give God the honor and the glory tonight for sparing our lives. We are privileged to see another month. And in so many cases, we see what is happening as the end of time is being played in our lives or being active in our lives. First of all, I want to give God thanks for each and every one who took the time off to, to share, whether it was on Facebook or just a natural call or as the case may be, to wish me happy birthday. I am eternally grateful. I am reminded that this job that I'm doing is so much more because many of the people, are, I mean, it, they might pass me on the street or I may pass them on the street, but they all reached out. And this is what God is saying. To, there comes a time when even your very own and those that you have gone so far out to help or to do good for, don't worry about it because your recompense is not from those who you know or from those who you may reach out to, but from those who don't know you. And this reminds me of the woman who sat at the feet of Jesus continually asking on behalf of a daughter that was sick. And Jesus said to her, woman, how can I take the bread of children and cast it to dogs? She, her reply was so great, yellow. Yeah, but even the drug, the, the crumbs that fall from the table, the dogs eat it. Today I want to say thank you to everyone, wherever you may be, in Africa, in England, wherever you may have been, France, Trinidad and Tobago, St. Vincent, Grenada, I want to say thank you all for the encouraging words. And you know, one said to me, according to, the, to one of the Baptist Bible group, they said, it's a new year. A new beginning. And those words resonated with me. And for this cause, you would observe the message today is coming from the consuming fire. And that individual, whoever she may be, I want to thank you for those words. Sometimes we are saying things, but we don't know how effective it can be. Yes, it's a new day. It's a new year. And the time has come for us to seek to understand and to know our faith even more. And this is what Ezekiel was doing here. This is why he had some of the, the most, what you would call a direct visions, And we call it apoplectic, apocalyptic visions. Which means God was speaking to him about the things that was going to happen right within his lifetime in the very day. God was showing him what is happening. And as we seek to go into this lesson to interpret it and to understand what God is really saying, and I don't know everything. You may know something that I don't. And if you are willing to share, I'm willing to, I'm willing to listen. So this is how important this is here. As we go into this word, we are going to see what God is doing and how he is doing to the children of Judah, the children of Israel. You know, Ezekiel, a man that was, was born, and let's concentrate on the consuming fire. You're going to see where, where we are going with this. So I want to say hello. I want to say thank you, Mother Anne, my good sister, Joanne. I hope you, you got that which you went out to get. May God bless and keep you all, each and every one of us. Donna Cox, thank you for being here. Captain Donna, always with us, sharing the good news and the word of the Lord. May God continue to bless and heal you in all you do and say. And to all who will be online with me again, I'm saying thank you all for the compliment, for sharing, and for being there. Tante Gomez, good night. As we go into the lesson, Heavenly Father, this day, I want to thank you for this opportunity. I want to thank you for this privilege. I want to thank you for this moment. I want to thank you for this hour. I want to thank you for my family. The offsprings are my body, each and every one of them, wherever they may be at this moment. Let their hearts find peace. And the offsprings of the world, you who have created us in your image and in your likeness, 
may we all find peace in this troubled time. And I want to say a special prayer, Lord, for Trinidad and Tobago, the land of my birth, where we see what is taking place at this moment. Heavenly Father, oh, the young children that are being murdered without reason. You know, it's a fear and it's a spirit that is overshadowing the land. I want to bind that spirit in the almighty name of Jesus. And I want to encourage the elders that we need to come together in the almighty name of Jesus for a purpose in times like these. And the purpose is if my people which are called by my name, Lord, help us to understand this. It's not just kneeling at your bedside. But Sunday morning we get at the pulpit and we talk all manner of things. But it'll help us to understand what is required of us, dear God, both now and forever. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. 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 Church, I would like you all to go with me in the Word. I truly wish you would have your Bible at hand. Always practice this. If we are sharing a message, we are sharing something, whoever the preacher may be, get your Bible in hand. As Paul said unto us, don't just take what I say, but prove the word of the Lord. So we're going to take this verse by verse, and let us try to break it down the best way we could. See how much we can really get out of this first verse of the first chapter of Ezekiel. I'm beginning to read. Now it came to pass in the 30th year, in the fourth month, in the fifth day of the month, as I was among the captives by the river of Cheba, that the heavens were open and I saw visions of God. Did this remind us of anything? He's sitting by the river Cheba. On the banks of a Jordan, look, I, I say Jordan, but it's a river, Jabal, which is in Babylon. And as he is sitting there on this Sabbath morning with the children of Judah, the captives of Judah, and this is the place and time that they, they form themselves in a church or to be the church where they would listen and they would offer themselves not knowing what was before them questioning god because we who are supposed to be the children of abraham and we are subjected to no man every other man is subjected to us and now here we are in babylon captive of king nebuchadnezzar serving him and I want to let you know, this is the second invasion of Babylon. The first one, Daniel was down there in the first invasion. But this invasion, again, is so important for us to understand because one of the things that we must notice carefully about Ezekiel is that he dates all the events of his life. So this is the time here that he was taken captive in five 97 BC. And when we use the term BC, we mean in before Christ. I'm not saying that you don't know, but I'm sharing. If I'm to share, I'm going to share. Meaning before Christ. This is the second time or the third time the Babylon, Babylonian invaded. Listen, the Babylonian invaded Judah a third and final time. And that was in 586 BC. You see 587 BC, 597 BC, and then you see 586 BC. At one time, I questioned this. What, what, what are you talking about? Because I didn't really understand it, you know, and as you begin to study the word. So what you're seeing here is the come down to Christ. So from 597 BC to 586 BC, you would realize that it's 11 years. Again, it's drawing closer. And even today, the time is drawing closer for us. So we must, I, I'm saying this so that we understand, because some of us who just get into the Bible study, we would not understand what it means. You say one thing, the first invasion was 580, 597, and now you're saying the third one the, is nine, is 11 years later, 586. What are you saying here? It should have been added. No, but 
It's a countdown to the coming hello, to the coming Messiah, the coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Always remember that the Jews were an example. This is why when Christ came, we find A.D. and Neos Domino. You see, so we must understand where we are and what we are sharing so that the children can grow and be all that God wants us to be. So what we are seeing here now is preparation for the coming Messiah. But the Jews were going through quite a lot of changes. Simply, I mean, and Paul made it clear for us, according to Romans 11 and beginning at verse 25, he said, Brethren, I would not that you should be ignorant pertaining to the blindness of the Jews. They could not see. It was not easy for them to understand. It was not easy for them to receive this new thing, moving away from Judaism. And all this time that they were in Babylon, the focus was more on Judaism rather than the, the work of the ministry of faith. So it was, they were in the midst of Judaism. But yet still, they were confused. And all this area of Judaism was in preparation for the coming of the Messiah. So we are going to see here as we look carefully. And I say to you, sitting by the river chamber, you know, let us remind ourselves, while we are in the Holy of Holies, we find ourselves in different places. We find ourselves doing different things. We find ourselves in schools, universities. And one of them universities, I'll share a name with you, Solomon High. When we get there, it's a new day. It's a new form of teaching. When you would enter, you would see that pool with the five swans. So many things for us to learn and to share with our people. And these are the things that Ezekiel was so young and tender. Not ready for that which is, excuse me. Sometimes, you know, you feel the joy, but I give God the praise. Not ready for his prophetic ministry. All of these things is what is being shared with us here in this very first verse. That the heavens opened and I saw visions of God. It was so confusing on that Sabbath morning. Young man not prepared for all that is before him. But yet still, because of the fear, this son of Bozai, this knowing God, and this is how important it is for us to be able to teach our children and to raise them up in the fear of God. So again, as we see here, church, how important it is. God's communication to Ezekiel in a vision is a miraculous revelation that God is true. Because the children of Israel had lost faith in God. So he is here by letting them know, listen, God is watching. And you are here because of your sins. You are here because of the things that you have done. But God, I, I, all, I, I share a message before God punishes with a plan. He never punishes us because he hates us. And in, in our last lesson, count the cost. Remember what he says. If you cannot hate mother and father, brother and sister, for my name's sake, you are not worthy to be my disciples. And this is how important it is. And what I'm sharing with you here, the hate, as I shared last week, the hate that God is speaking of is not a hate to destroy or a hate to kill. But if necessary, it can be. If we continue in our hardness of heart and we continue to walk according to the way of the world. Before he lost us, he'd rather take us home. So again, sometimes we do not understand, but I say to you, he punishes with a plan. What are you saying, Bishop? Consider your ways. If you are punishing your child, is it because you are punishing that child because you hate that child? And I'm not speaking here in physical whipping or as the case may be. But again, you may say, you are not going outside. 
the party is right next door and you would say, listen, you are not going there because X, Y, and Z. You are trying to share, share something value with that child. And this is what is happening. So when I speak to you and I said God punishes with a plan, I would like you to step back with me in Jeremiah 29 and you will see what I'm speaking about. Jeremiah 29. And I, you know, this is a mysterious work. This is a time when God in Babylon, remember the children of Israel were not permitted to marry and intermarry. But God is doing something. He's, he sent them, he gave them into the hands of, of Nebuchadnezzar. And now hear what he is saying to them from the 26th, 29th chapter of Genesis. I'm going to read from the 6th verse. I'm sharing these things with you because I know it is important for us to know. Too many a times, you know, many of us leave the faith and when we reach out there, you know, we begin to get teachings from other organizations because we are not doing our homework and we get so tired. The moment we have to, to move from one lesson to another, we complain, but this is the only way. It's a line upon a line and little here and a little there. Thus said the Lord. This is not Bishop David or any one of the other ministers who are sharing the word with you. So it's as they study or as we study and God share with us certain and reveal to us. This is what Ezekiel is, is experiencing here. Apocalyptic revelations. That is so plain and and being brought into the prophetic work of God. He is confused, but yet still, because of his upbringing, he is able to sit by the river chamber and also begin now to prophesy with the, to the children of Israel who had lost their faith. And when I say lost their faith, they lost faith in everything. Why? Because the temple that Solomon had built where their faith lies, you know, because the temple meant everything to the children of Israel. And when they see that Nebuchadnezzar destroyed it all, the pillars, the brazen, uh, the brazen basins, that they, or the sea that Solomon built, the, four, the 12 bulls, you know, and all of the gold and silver was taken and the, the temple burnt to the ground. It, Jerusalem was burnt. So all their joy and pride was, was burnt to the ground. Jesus said he would do this. God said he would do that. He spake it through Jeremiah. He spake it through Isaiah. He spake it through Ezekiel. And as you would see here, Ezekiel, Daniel, and John are three important prophets that we need to take a good look at and seek to understand their lives and what their lives mean to our lives. And the sacrifices that they had to make. Daniel at a very early age, being sold in the first captive. You have Ezekiel in the third captive, already in Babylon, simply because the king went according to the way of the world rather than stood in the way of the Lord. Hezekiah lost his two eyes in Babylon because he went according to the way of the world rather than following the precepts of God. But I want you to see something here. God is going to get your attention. God is going to get your attention. What are you suffering from? Bad circulation? What are you suffering from? God knows. He knows the heart. And just remember that, that guy with dropsy, that, which again, and I explained to you what dropsy is, where the tissues and, and fluid build up in the cavities and tissues of the body whereby we do not have proper circulation. God knew that. But it was to show forth the glory of God. What is it? God wants to show forth in your life something to the world that he is able. He is still the God of yesterday, today, and forevermore. He punishes with a plan, church. And I want you to understand what I'm saying. So even these children, while they are in Babylon, Hear from the fifth verse. Hear the words of God. Build ye houses and dwell in them. Let yourself be removed. You know, when your prophets come to you and tell you, well, this is going to happen and this is going to happen, do not believe them as you begin to read here. Do not believe them. If they should come to tell you, let us guard ourselves to pray unto God, well, then yes, 
form yourselves in a in an organized church as Ezekiel did and the captives on the bank of the river Chaba. Do this because this is what is important. But when God allow you to be delivered into the hands of your captive and then someone, some wise men, you know, sometimes we get the revelation, but so many of us, I don't believe that. Because it wasn't given to you. So we have to be very clear. And if you don't believe that, why not go to God and ask him? Maybe you are not hearing from him. So we, all of these things is what is important. But God is speaking through Ezekiel. And in this chapter, he says, Build your houses and dwell in them. Plant garden and eat the fruit of them. Look at what is happening here. Remember, the, the, listen, so the children of Israel went and marry and intermarry. And God made them give up all their wives and the children. This is why we have the Samaritans today. Did you know that? But hear what he is saying here now. He said, take the sixth verse of the 29th chapter of Jeremiah. Take ye wives and begat sons and daughters and take ye wives for your sons and give your daughters to husbands that they may bear sons and daughters that ye may increase there in Babylon. That ye may increase there in Babylon and not diminish. And seek the peace of the city, whether I have caused you to be carried away. It is not you went there because you are so good and you want to. No, it is God who caused you to carry, be carried away because of sin. You say, I carried away captive and pray unto the Lord for it. For in the peace thereof shall ye have peace. In other words, trust and obey. Lord, thank you for what you have done. Thank you for what you are doing. Thank you for being God. I could have been cut off and gone. Sometimes do we recognize the very hymn that we sing? And are we yet alive to see each other's face? You know, these are the things that I'm sharing with you because I believe this is what God wants us to receive from his word. He says, this is easy, Kelly. He's saying, pray unto the Lord for it. For in the peace thereof, Shall he have peace? But when you are walking away with prejudice in your heart, when you are looking at someone else and you're so angry, you're in church, you know, you're sitting on the altar of God and you are so angry at another minister, in your heart you are harboring. Listen, be very careful of the things that you hold in your heart. Michael. The wife, the daughter of Saul, the wife of David, she despised Moses in her heart. And because of this, God cursed her womb. She was never able to bring forth a child for David. Every other one of David's wives and concubines brought him children. But she was never able to bring forth a child. That curse, when we sit on the altar... And we have so much that we wouldn't, you know, we have, we have so much anger and hate. And we're not understanding. There are those who are reaching out. And we continue to reach out. But because you have grown so wise and so intelligent that you are not, you forget who had reached out to you. But there comes a time when those who are reaching out will stop. Just as God was angry and displeased with the children of Israel. And he allowed them to go captives, but yet with a purpose. The 8th verse of the 29th chapter of Jeremiah. For thus said the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Let not your prophets and your diviners be in the midst of you, deceive you, neither hearken unto your dreams, which, ye, uh, which, ye, which cause to be dreamed. You know, sometimes... We walking, you know, we're not even proving anything. In other words, what God is telling you here, don't happen unto your dreams, you know. And don't let them come and tell you, you know, we could devise a plan. We could get out of here. We could do this. And this is what is happening. What can we do to, to move him off the, from, from where he is that someone else could sit there? It's the same way they are going to plot 
against you in some way, shape, or form to get you off of this. So don't be a part of their wicked devices. Don't be a part of it. But I want to, to, to get back where we are. So I want to share this. You would see what I'm speaking of when I said God punishes with a plan. For thus said the Lord, that after 70 years, you see, he don't send you into a situation and not explain to you why. He lets you know what is happening. He also sets up a manner in which you can have peace and you can be comfortable. Even in the midst of the chaos and the grieving of your heart, O oh, Jerusalem, O oh, that temple that meant so much to us, we are far away from it, and it's not even standing anymore because it's burned down. You can look at Nebuchadnezzar with anger and hate, but God is telling you, seek the Lord and peace shall be found. Forget him. I will deal with him when that time comes. And I want you to know that he had to walk on his hands and his feet for seven years until he was able to look up. Even God using him as his servant. But God has a plan for you, church. Sometimes I look around at myself and I say, well, why? The people that you reach out to. And these are the lessons that comfort me. The people that you reach out to. The people that you hand out to. The people that you deny yourself for. When you look over your shoulder, they are nowhere there. Don't give up. Don't give up. For thus said the Lord. That after 70 years be accomplished at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word towards you in, the causing, in causing you to return to the place. Hear what he says. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. The end of it all will be glorious. But because of your sin, you will feel the pains. Because of your wicked your idolatry, your idolatry life, you will feel the pains. You, you, you're not worshipping God the way you ought. You're giving on to every other thing. You're worshipping man and all, rather than worship God. But I remember when Peter and Paul and they, go, they, they, they try to bow down. He said, bow not down before me, for I'm but a man just like you. Even the angel said it. Don't bow down before me, for I'm but only a servant of the Lord. But today we are looking for the dishonor. But remember what happened to Pharaoh when he sought to take the life of Peter. After taking the life of James and he felt so good. He felt so good. Because the Jews cried out. Oh yes. And he is now seeking to get up. In favor with the Romans. Because they had elevated him. And when he stood up and he began to. To speak to the Jews. And when they heard the things that he said. They cried out. This is not a man. This is a God. And it is silly man. Raise his hand to take oration. And the moment he did that, the worms begin to eat him from inside. I want you to imagine what was going on. You know, we're looking for everybody to say how good he is. And we as ministers say, oh Lord, my minister, my minister, don't glorify me, glorify God. I don't need you to glorify me. We must be able to appreciate one another, but not in that form. Oh, this is not a man that speaks. This is God. And he stood up to take that oration. And with that, I imagine the pain that kept his hand right out there. And the maggots eating him from inside out. Let us be careful. I'm seeing ministers bathing themselves in a barrel and giving people the water to drink. And we are so silly. We're drinking that water. I want to speak about it because we, we, we've fallen short. This is how far back we have gone. Let us move forward and let us understand. Remember the prayer that was given unto us, our Father. We art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name, only thy name. And this is what is happening with the children of Israel and the things that they are going through. And because of this, 
This young man's life is about to change. Not even understanding what is going on with him, but his life is about to change. And I'm going to jump to you here because it is important. I want to go from this fourth verse and you will see this is where we're speaking of the revelation that God had with Ezekiel. And I look. Listen. And the word, I'm reading from the third verse. And the word of the Lord came ex, expressly. Listen, this is, how, this is how serious this is. The word of the Lord did not come gradually. <clears throat> and, wow, what is this? We question. And if we are not here to question and ask questions and to prove things, as the scripture gave us that authority, then we are not walking right. Expressly mean right on the spot. And God had to open his heart so that he could receive this. And God wants to do the same with you. But we continue to walk sluggish. We need to arise. Remember what the angel said unto to Peter. Arise. Arise quickly. Move with joy. Move with haste. As though you want something. You know, we stopped doing this and we stopped doing that. And I will always say this because we did not get the understanding. We were not taught. So we have to learn to walk aright. He said, listen, the word came expressly unto Ezekiel, the priest, the son of Bozai, in the land of Chaldea, of the Chaldeans, meaning in Babylon, by the river Cheba. And the hand of the Lord was there upon him. Do you understand what that means? When the Holy Spirit moves you and the children is moving in the spirit and you sitting on your high seat and watching them and telling them you can't be a little more discreet, you have to get on like that. Observe the word here. The word of the Lord came expressly unto Ezekiel the priest, the son of Bozar. In the land of Chaldea, do you think he wants to act out in the manner in which he is acting out? Do you feel he wants to go that way? Sitting by the river, and the hand of God was there upon him. Look at the things that is happening here. Look at the changes that is taking place in his life. So sometimes when you see the children, and you see them sitting and they're meditating and they're focusing, and they arise, with that anointing, it is for you now to reach them. It is for you now to take them through. Not just to sit down there, you don't have to be so unruly. Which means you don't understand what you are doing. You don't understand the movement of the Spirit. It was never given to you. You took it upon yourself. Otherwise, you're going to help that child to grow. And if it means just putting that child to pray... And you standing at her side and laying your hands upon her, believing in God and praying, you can help that child to break the barrier and to remove. Listen, look at what is happening here. Church, this is so deep. He said, and I look, the fourth verse, and beheld a real wind came out of the north. A symbolic reference of the armies of Nebuchadnezzar overshadowing the city of Israel, Judah, besieging them, taking them into captivity because of their sins. And a great cloud of fire enfolding itself remind ourselves, you know, this is what I'm speaking of here, the consuming fire. We do not understand the depth of these areas here. You know, someone said to me, you know, Church, I want to share these with things with you. Someone said to me, the bones that Ezekiel prophesied to in the valley of dry bones, he said they have to return to life and they have to walk the face of the earth again. And I'm saying to you, never in this life. The bones that Ezekiel saw was the house of Israel. That moved away from the precepts of righteousness, truth, and grace. And the message that we carry, this is what I'm carrying with you today. 
is for us to understand and to know and to be able to walk in it. And this unfolding, this cloud of fire, enfolding, enfolding. You, see, you ever really watch fire and see how it rises? And it's, it, you know, and it's, oh Lord God of Israel, it's power. It's power beyond our understanding. Watch something that, you know, when you look, you see a building burning and you stand on the outside, you don't just see the fire going up, you see the fire like it's rolling in itself. It's a terrible sight. And this is what Ezekiel is seeing here. Not prepared for this, but carried away as a young man within his late 20s. And here now, after five years in Babylon, I did not explain that to you, but in the fourth and twentieth year, you see, it continued by the land of the Chibar. And this is the fifty this is the fifth year. We're gonna get into that. In the fifth year, fifth day of the month, which was the fifth year, so it is self explanatory. Sorry for jumping you if I didn't get you this. It was five years since he was in Babylon and the other 10,000 captives with him. And now this young man at the age of 30 has to prophesy unto all these old men, telling them, Thus said the Lord, was he ready? Well, again, the manner in which we raise our children will help them to be able to stand. Was there a fear to speak to the elders? I want you to see that, yes. I say there was a fear, while others may say there was no fear. But I want to read a verse from the second chapter, somewhere around the fifth verse. I want to read. I'm going to read from the third verse. And he said unto me, Son of man, I send thee to the children of Israel, to a rebellious nation that had rebelled against me, so you see the purpose, you see the reason why they are in Babylon. You see the reason why they are going through what they are going through. And they and, they and their fathers have transgressed against me, everyone, unto this day. For they are impudent children, stiff-necked, listen, st stiff-hearted. I do send thee unto them, and thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord. You know, sometimes we sit in the churches and the Holy Spirit, we still have our collective revelations and visions, you know. But we sit there and we, we you know, we, we, we muzzle ourselves. How can you muzzle the ox that tread the corn? What produce are you going to get out of that? So we have to sit back and think now. He said, listen, say unto them, Thus saith the Lord. And they, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear, for they are rebe a rebellious house, yet sh ye shall yet shall know that there had been a prophet among them. Yet that they know there had been a prophet among them. And in other words, I'm saying to you, Ezekiel became that new prophet on his 30th birthday. You know, today we're taking little men, little children, and we're ordaining them as ministers. I want you to remember that they have a life to live. They have temptations to face. They have challenges to fight. So when you take that little child and you're saying, whether he's 17, 16, or whatever, think about yourself. If you said you were 17, think about the wrong things that you have done. Are you trying to protect him? Are you telling me that God didn't know what he was doing when he gave us a certain age in order to enter into the ministry? You have grown so wise now. Oh, they, 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 they were priests. Yes. Anyone ministering unto the Lord is, is a priest, a minister of the Lord. Carrying the message of faith. Yes, we have priests of different degrees. So we have to know where we are. And this is why we have to be very careful in what we do. So even here in the preparation of Ezekiel, 
to be the mouthpiece of the Lord, he is being encouraged. Tell them whether they bear or they forbear. Observe, he said, on this cloud, and a fire enfolding in it itself, and a brightness was about it, and out of the midst thereof, as the color of amber, out of the midst of the fire. Let's deal with fire here for a moment. And this is why I said the consuming fire. Let us ask ourselves a question. Why to every time the full Shekinah glory of God is, is shown unto man, it is shown through fire. Let us take some steps back. Let us look at Moses. Cast out of Egypt. Found themselves in Ethiopia. And while there, not knowing where he is, being going to be a protector now of these women who were about Jethro, Jethro's daughter, daughters. And he protected them. And these daughters went home. And this is what they do. They give him a wife. The eldest daughter. And he began to work with Jethro. In his field, you know, in his field. And observe, he became a shepherd boy. From a prince. Sometimes God has to bring us down. To raise us up. From a prince in Egypt. Now you're a shepherd boy, but look where he's going on the backside of the mountain. To look for grazing. To look for place that the animals would feed. And also be watered. But something happened according to the third chapter of Exodus. As he raised his eyes. I lift my eyes to heaven. When my spirit quailed, when there was a moment and time in my life that I had nowhere to go and no one to turn to, I lift my eyes. But this mountain here that was considered the mountain of God, something to be, to be looked upon, he couldn't go behind that mountain and not look up. And as he looked up, what he saw was this tree. Again, I say, an apoplectic vision. Apocalyptic vision. A revelation so real that we cannot understand. But as we read in the book of Exodus, the third chapter, he willed himself. He said, I will see. I will go closer and see. I want you to read, I want to read that for you, please, if you will allow me. Exodus 3. Sometimes it's so important for us to take these times. Church, please help me. I need your help. I need your help because there's work, so much work to be done. But there is nobody. Observe what it says here. The third chapter of Exodus. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro. His father-in-law, the priest of the Midian, meaning the Ethiopians. And he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God. Something majestic about that mountain. That even the Bible is calling it here the mountain of God. Something had to be majestic. So he said it's the mountain of God. And it says here, even to Horeb. So which means you're not going to just pass by that mountain and not look up. He said, and the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire. And saying, why when we have this communication with God, it is always in fire and out of the midst of the fire and out of the midst of a bush. And he looked and behold, the bush burned with fire and the bush was not consumed. Only God can do this. It is only God that is able to perform such a miracle. And have you wondering, you know, someone said, 
Moses performed magic in Egypt. No, Moses did not perform no magic. I don't know what book you're reading. Moses did not perform no magic in Egypt. It's a mystery of God. When the Magi threw their sticks on the ground, or their staffs on the ground, and God said to Moses, what do you have in your hand? Moses didn't know what to do. God tell him, cast it down. And when he cast it down, his rod, eat all those rods, those snakes, that, that trans with whatever magic they was doing. And Moses' rod never get any larger than it was. It is God. Let us stop taking things for ourselves. And let us give God the glory. Do not be like Herod, that maggots will eat us from inside out. Understand what God is saying and why he is doing what he is doing. So we continue with the fire. When Moses had to receive the, the Ten Commandments, the two tablets of stone, what happened? Or he even with the children of Israel. We see the cloud here. We're speaking of the cloud in the fourth chapter. Cloud, and a great cloud and a fire enfolding itself. How did the children of Israel were led? A pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. Are you hearing? Are you listening to what is being said? And this is not adding to the word, neither is it taken away from the word, but it is giving God the glory because he is able. A pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. Ezekiel wasn't there. Maybe he was in his mother's womb. But not there with the children of Israel. So he didn't know anything about this pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night. And the children had to be so, in, I mean, obedient to the instruction of Moses that as long as that pillar, whether it be the cloud standing in the day or the pillar of fire standing at night, until that move, the children of Israel will not move because they were being guided. By the Lord. And the fire by night was to, it could have been fire by day too, you know. But they might not have gotten a clear vision of it. So in the darkness, this is what they do. God brightened himself. God showed himself in the form of a fire. I want you to see something here. When we begin to look again, we're looking at fire. Why are we seeing to every time we see God in his mysterious power we see him in the midst of fire let's think again Moses receiving the tablets the mountain smoking because it's hot fire up there and instructions were given there was a certain parameter the children of Israel cannot cross not even animals if the animals cross it they also will die because that area is holy that area there is holy. Let's look again. Let's take a good look again. Daniel. And even before Daniel, let us take it in its, its, its stages. The temple that Solomon built. What happened? As you enter the temple, at the entrance of the temple, there was an altar. And that altar is called the altar of burnt offering. And that is where the high priest, after killing the animals, will place there and the fire burn and that, that meat and, you know, that the burn you hear. Noah said, the Lord said it's a sweet smelling savor. Whatever that scent is, I don't know. I don't know the mystery in the scent. I don't know the power of I don't know how it excites God. But that's what was before. Before you enter the temple, this is what you would meet. You don't enter the temple no, no other way. As some of us try to come in. And hear what the scripture says. If you enter, but through the door. Observe what is being said. If you enter, but through the door, the main door. You are but a thief and a robber. If you climb through the, come through the side door, if you come through the, the window, you're a thief and a robber. You know, and I have sought to practice myself to this. 
No matter what church I go in, and you know, I would go to the back, I would change my clothes, and to some people it, le- it looks stupid, but to me it makes sense. And I would put on my priestly garment, and then I would walk all the way around and come back to the front door, because this is where I'm supposed to enter. And this is how important it is. These little things mean a lot. And the time is now for us to understand this. So again, you see that this is where you are passing now the altar of burnt offering, the presence of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the symbolic reference of him who will die for you in the form of a lamb being burnt on that fire. So let's understand what is happening here. So that's another stage. The temple here is being built. And even before that, Abraham, at the very mount of God, is about to offer his son, Isaac. And after he laid him on the altar, To bring forth that burnt offering. God said touch not thy son. Because he was just proving the heart of Abraham. But look in the thicket. You would see a lamb. Catch it. And burn him on the altar. Fire. Let's understand where he is going. What he is doing to us. And what he is sharing with us. We come back to Daniel in this very land of Babylon, where Ezekiel is prophesying from at this moment. And saying, being cast into the fiery furnace. The furnace is heated seven times its normal size. It's normal heat or temperature. Nebuchadnezzar lies in his office. In his bed and couldn't even sleep. Worried. Was it Nebuchadnezzar or Darius? Worried. I'm teasing your mind. Go with it. Think about the lesson. In the book of Daniel. Worried. The musicians playing music for him. Even at night. And he couldn't sleep. Get up very early in the morning. And went. And peeped within. And when he looked within, in the midst of the fire, he said, I've thrown three, but now I'm seeing four. And the fourth person looked as a similitude, as the Son of God. In the midst of the fire, Christ is always there. That consuming fire, which is not going to destroy you as a child of God if you are living the life that is expected of you. Clean hands. And our heart may not always be pure, and I'm not making no excuse. Our hearts may not always be pure, but keep a clean hands. I beg you, keep a clean hands. Do not dip these hands into iniquity. Remember what happened to David. David, you cannot build a temple because your hands are stained with blood. Keep a clean hands, church. You're doing things in the dark. Nobody may not see you, but God is watching you. You're hurting people's children. You're breaking up people's marriage. You're sending young men on the street mad. And you're rejoicing about that. Keep a clean hands and a pure heart. You're going before God and you're praying that that back by them. Something happened. Why not pray that their lives be changed? Remember what the 12th chapter of Romans says. If your enemy hungry, feed him. If he thirsty, give him water to drink. I'm not saying to you, don't pray and ask God to keep the enemy away from you. Ask God to do that because you want to be safe. But also ask God to change his heart. Not to take him out of this life. You didn't give life. 
It is God who gave life. So when we begin to see all of these things, church, and we begin to understand what is happening, the fire, the fire. And there was a question that was asked in Jeremiah 33, Isaiah 33. I want to read that for you. You know, sometimes when we're dealing with this, we cannot finish this study tonight. But we're going to come back into it. I trust. I'll let you know. Isaiah 33, and whoever gets there before me, read it. Isaiah 33 and verse 14. Observe here. The sinners in Zion are afraid. Fearfulness had surprised the, hypo the hypocrite. Fearfulness has, had surprised the hypocrite. Who among us, listen to this, who among us shall dwell with the devouring fire? Who among us shall dwell in everlasting burning? He that walketh righteously and speaketh uprightly, he that despiseth the gains of oppression and shaketh his hands from holding bribe, that stop his ears from hearing of blood and shut his eyes from seeing evil. Are you hearing that? So when we begin to speak of these things, and I, I send you, you know, sometimes, you know, we're doing what we ought to do. We're going to say like Calabash. Be careful, you know. Be careful. I'm speaking to you this evening. Be very careful. You ever watch something? As the Holy Spirit said, you're going to, I'm mean, talking to me now, you're going to feed the sea. Yeah, you're going to sail out all of these nice things and hungry people out there. And you carry it out as far as you could go. When the tide coming in, what happens? The tide washed it all back to shore. Who you was feeding? I want you to think about that. Be very wise. And this is what God is saying to us here. God is, you know, it's only he that despises evil will be able to stand in the midst of that fire. And instead of burning us to destroy us, that fire is going to polish our body like like burnt brass, it's going to polish us, it's going to shine us. Not white. Like polished brass. Be proud of yourself and who you are and the calling that you are called to. Walk in the wisdom of God. And know what He has in store for you. The fire. In the midst of the fire, in the midst of the fire, something happened. Something that we cannot explain and, and it, it will take us a whole lot before we can explain this. The life of Ezekiel had changed. Not knowing what was happening, but being able to, to submit himself so if you are looking for the area of scripture that they were taken into Babylon, you can go back to 2 Kings 24 and 25. Read these two areas. And this young man that was taken sometimes, this is why I'm saying to you, be careful how you treat the people in the congregation, the young men, the young women, who God is willing to use, and you're willing to, to subdue them. Because they're not speaking the language that you want to hear. Why not listen to what they are saying so that we can find some peace? The time has come because God is going to raise up prophets. This young man, maybe not knowing Daniel, but now walking in the same prophecy and the same prophetic life of Daniel, And again, I say with you, when I speak of apocalyptic, this means this, you see visions, picture, vivid, convey, conveying an idea. 
Oh Lord, look, this is what is being said to me. This is what is being said to me now. I'm hearing this, you know, we, we speak of all these psychic and all these whatever and whatever. But let us understand that everything is with a price. He was speaking directly to God with no price. You know, we have certain things in the churches now, you know. You have to line up in the $20 line and the $50 line and the $100 line. Is this of God? These are the questions that we have to ask ourselves. And remember the message here, according to, to Ezekiel 2. I want to read that again. You who are profiteering on the children of God, living good, I hope on the bed of affliction you are able to tell them what it is. Hear what it says. The fifth verse. The fifth verse of the second chapter. And they, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear, for they are a rebellious house, yet shall know that there had been a prophet among them. I've been speaking to you for so long and you're not listening. But even on that bed of affliction, you would be able to say, yeah, Lord, you said it. Let us not wait for too long. Let us not harden our hearts. But let us walk the way God wants us to walk. And sometimes I say to you, among all the prophets, Ezekiel is the only one that dated every prophecy that he had received. fire. Let me share with you from the 8th chapter. I want to share this with you from the 8th chapter. The very first, beginning from the very first verse. Hear what it says again. And it came to pass in the 6th year, observe, when you get your visions, when you get your revelations, are you too busy to write them down? Are you too busy to document do you have a book that you, you have all of these revelations? That your grandchildren, you, you read everybody else's testimonies, where are yours? Where are yours? If my children and grandchildren have nothing else to go back on, they can go back on these videos. And they say, you know, Grandpa did say so and so. You don't have to be doing what I'm doing, but you can record. When God speaks to you, don't just dream it tonight and forget it tomorrow. I mean, not every dream you would write, but there are dreams that you would not understand. But here we are seeing Ezekiel making a record. He's saying, in the sixth month, in the sixth year, in the sixth month, in the fifth day of the month, look how precise. As I sat in my house, and the elders of Judah sat before me, that the hand of the Lord fell upon me. Then I beheld, and lo, a lightness as the appearance of fire. How come to every time we see God, this is how we see him. And I know many of us have not gone through this area or line of study, but it is something that we can build on. I do not know everything, but I'm sharing with you so that you can build on this and that you can make videos and that you can share with the world how sweet the name of Jesus is and how we listen. He says the appearance of fire from the appearance of his loin, even downward fire and from the loins even upward as the appearance of the brightness as the color of amber fire. Let us understand what is being said. And let us walk with it so that God can bless us. Again, I want to say thank you all for being with me. From next, uh, hopefully our next message would be from the very first chapter, but we will be dealing with the faces. The faces, we will be dealing with the, 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 the spirits. And I say spirits. We'd be dealing with the seraphim, the cherubims that were there, that Ezekiel saw. We'd be dealing with their faces. 
and you know with the sharing i pray that you would go into it and get some understanding for yourself so that we can come back here and share in the almighty name of jesus christ our lord so may god bless you may god make his face to shine upon you and i'm saying to you thank you for sharing your time thank you for being with me thank you open your hearts open your mind and let god have his way this is important again i said someone said to me bishop happy birthday this is a new year we need we this is a new beginning and that word strike me so that this is where we are a new beginning all in the book of ezekiel and we are going to go through this chapter and i pray to hear from you oh yes that we will all grow in grace my good sister Murtu, you have not been here for a while but we bless god for you thank you all each and every one of you may god keep you and make his face to shine upon you and may he give us that peace again i say that peace which passes all understanding please share this message share it if it means something to you if it interests you share it if it don't mean anything to you well then what can i say but i'm giving you my heart in this message share it as god as god allow you may god bless you may god make his face to shine upon you and i wish you all a pleasant night good night one and all blessings for a selfish of a selma good night